and gentlemen, please remain seated as we venture through the Twilight Zone. Beyond the outer limits of reality, reality, reality. To arrive at our destination, the Unicus Radio Hour. 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 And now, here is your host, critically acclaimed author and researcher, Robert Stanley. Stanley. <laughs> Who knows what evil lurks in the hearts of men? <laughs> the shadow knows. Greetings, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to another episode of the Unicus Radio Hour. I am your Jedi host, Robert Stanley, podcasting from Hong Kong on the greatest alternative talk radio station on the planet, KGRA. Yes, that was The Shadow uh, by Orson Welles. So I, the reason I played that is because of what I discussed with you in the previous episode and what we are going to discuss again today. Evil that lurked in the heart of mankind and how is that possible and what can we do about it? Okay, again, just to be clear, I am not a religious person. However, I am a spiritual person individual that is seeking some guidance and truth and hopefully salvation or whatever it takes to get out of here. Uh, again, I, you know, I shared this with you just the other day, and uh, it's it's already resonating with a lot of people. Okay, just to be clear, I am putting some of these shows up on YouTube, and that is getting a much quicker feedback mechanism for me. Of course, there's a, it's a mixed bag, right? Some people are offended, some people are actually elated. It's, it's fine. I understand that, but at least it's got your attention. We're talking about something here that's really quite unusual and possibly true. We're going to find out. I'm the re, And this is why I'm going to play you some clips, because I'm seeing this coming up all over the place, in, at least in my research. And I, I look, I, I'm not prejudiced. I, I'll take information from any place. I can get it at this point. And... I'm hearing other talk show hosts talk. They're talking about Satan and Lucifer and the fallen angels. And this one particular guy, he's a he's very prominent. I won't even mention his name, but you you probably know who it is. Uh, national talk show host, Jewish guy, and uh, very intelligent. And he was talking about why does Satan even exist? You know, and uh, he's it, just like in the shadow. It says um, in ancient Hebrew, it talks about the evil. In men's hearts, which I thought was fascinating. It's another clue. They call it the Yetzirah. And um, this is from the old Judaism, or Hebrew. It's a congenital inclination to do evil by violating the will of God. Now, where in, where in the world could that have come from? How could that be congenital? If we're children of God, what, just from eating an apple? No way. That's not <laughs> in a garden? That's impossible. That, that makes absolutely no sense whatsoever. So there's got to be more to the story, and that's what we're discussing here today, or I should say that's what I'm presenting to you. I am making the case. Okay, now the book I, I have up on my website, The Way Home, uh, I realize that some people find that, have to, I find it very hard to accept. But is it accurate? Well, we're going to find out, aren't we? I don't mean not on this show, but I like for myself. I'm really using that as a template, and I'm starting to see, does it fit? Do, do things actually fit? Is it accurate? Um, well, the clues are everywhere. Like I said, I was listening to Jimmy Church yesterday speaking to a Jewish rabbi, and he was this, this kind of came up again in a different way. I do see there's a, you know, a dovetailing of this information, for me anyway, right now. I guess because I'm open to it, and that's a good thing, in my opinion, remaining open to these things. Uh, you know, okay, look, part of the thing that in this particular book, The Way Home, some people are going to take issue with it because it seems sexist, but the author addresses that in there in, in like page 30 or whatever. It's a very short book, by the way, it's only 100 pages. And he says, you know, it's, look, he says, if you think I hate women, think again, I wouldn't be writing this book if I didn't love everybody. Because the soul, our souls are not neither male or female. We take on these bodies depending on our path here at this reformatory. That's what he calls it. 
We are here to be reformed as fallen angels. Now, again, you know, I'm including myself in this. And uh, it's, man, it's, it's actually making a lot of sense, but it's very disturbing at the same time. It's sobering, and, um, but it's disturbing. And, you know, and, you know, I, I don't know how old this Ju- Judaic tradition or, or understanding, because this isn't even a belief. This just seems to be fundamental. I've never heard it until just today. I was, like I said, I was listening to the radio and I'm hearing it from various talk show hosts that I listen to. I, I've always listened to radio. I told you that before, since I was a little kid. I love radio. I love reading books. And here I am. I find myself basically writing books and, and, and doing radio myself. But I mean, I got I to gotta share something important with you. Or what's the point, really? I, I, I feel like we, this is every moment we're together here is valuable. And so here's what, it, here's what it is when I, I get these clues like this. Yitzhahurah, the evil inclination in man, or what is often called man's natural inclination, has been the subject of debate since time immemorial. Oh, all right, whatever that means. The traditional Jewish view on this co- complex subject is well-defined in rabbinic literature. The Yetzirah is not a demonic force, but rather man's misuse of things the physical body needs to survive. Well, okay, again, it's it's a matter of interpretation. But if it's if it's there from birth, that means it's part of our soul self. It's not the body per se, and. It goes back to what this what this individual, whoever he really is, writing this particular book, The Way Home. Um, I don't know. Just I, look when I, I I look at the news and I see this is always it's always been like that, but it's getting worse. People who are so called religious or spiritual leaders, in all over the world, they're being uh, exposed for for not only being frauds, but criminals. This guy John of God, and. He's got all these crystals and pictures of Jesus and ascended masters and whatever. He's in jail now because he's been he's he's been involved in all kinds of criminal activity, including rape, uh, basically stealing people's money. I'm sure these people can't hardly afford what you know what he's doing here, but it adds up. Uh, he apparently he was pulling in about fourteen million dollars a year through his whatever it is his his pharmacy and his you know, these, these surgeries and the healings and whatever he was doing. And apparently, obviously he had a lot of followers. You know, he's very charismatic. He just, you know, people want to believe that there's somebody who's going to fix their problem for them. And what I find very interesting and appealing about this particular book that I have up on the website at unicusmagazine.com, The Way Home, it, it has nothing to do with religion. In fact, it's anti-religious, which is weird because of, he's talking about just like John Pinella's books, The Divine Secret Garden, they both, both of these authors, men, take a Gnostic view in that religion is the work of the dark side, designed to divide us and confuse us, and which obviously works pretty well. But and so the, why this individual, the author, is even talking about religious events is that is for clarification only. Now, of course, it doesn't mean it's perfect. I don't agree with everybody all the time. No, I don't think anybody does. That's just not that's not our nature. Uh, however, there are some things in there, like I said, that I th- I feel are accurate, or at least they are applicable to our situation, which is obviously very convoluted and corrupt. And again, like I said, this guy John of God in jail now, millions of dollars in his bank accounts. Uh, you know, it, from <laughs> what i've you know and and he was a very and he's a very bad guy he's a criminal so in his heart yet yeah obviously inclination towards evil yes under the under the false pretense of being a spiritual leader slash healer or whatever now i told you this before i don't take any pleasure in mentioning this but it's absolutely true yogananda is another one there's so many so many it's not just india um pat robertson hmm no, there was another guy. I'm trying to think of the guy that cried all the time. Uh, Jim Baker. No? Was that the guy? Anyway. PTL, the Praise the Lord Club. Uh, yeah, Jim and his wife. She's always crying. She was always crying. He was crying too. They, but they were, you know, fleecing the flock, as it were. Which is pretty typical. I, I see also in Mexico, 
because this is going to come up later when I play you a sound clip that will absolutely that boggles my mind, but it, it seems totally appropriate for the topic. The murders in Mexico have risen even more to a new record level last year, 2018. And where is that coming from? Well, they're blaming it on the drug cartels, but guess what? Mexico has a long history of human sacrifice. If you if you know anything about history at all, <laughs> that place, the Aztecs, the Mayas, whatever, uh, they they just like we kill each other. Oh, although they were induced into doing this for, and they were most of them were on drugs, by the way, which I'll explain a little bit later. Uh, they were under the influence of the dark side of the forest. But w- how is it, if you just take a drug, is that going to make you evil? Or is it opening the doorway? Is it like flanning, fanning the flames of of the dark side? That's already in us, in, inherent in us. You see, this is, this is a clue. This is another clue. And... You know, it's it's sort of like that game playing um, counting cars. How many how many red cars can you see in ten minutes, or something like that? So as you start looking for them and you see them. Well, that's basically what's happening to me right now. I'm I'm hearing it. I'm seeing it. And uh, you know, uh, again, I just feel like I should share it with you. Obviously, I'm getting feedback from people too. By the way, <laughs> um, especially on YouTube, they to, I'm leaving the comments section open. And some people have even written to me already about yesterday's episode uh, because I'm putting it up on YouTube a little more quickly than you're going to actually hear it on KGRA or accessing it in the KGRA archive. I'm just trying it out just to see how that works. Okay. So I just, I'm a little flabbergasted by all of the events that are unfolding. And obviously, there's a reason for it. I can't exactly say what it is because I'm not sure, but I think we're going to find out. I, I have a feeling that this is, I mean, I, I've always felt in the past 10 years or so that this was, we're coming up on something huge. And uh, hopefully it's going to be good for everybody. That's that's my hope. But I can't say, I really can't say that for sure. Uh, one of the things that was sent to me was... Uh, Unfortunately, about West Penry. Now you know I have him. His work, his his original West Penry papers are in my library, and I have interviewed Wes through email. But he always told me he wasn't doing any public interviews. I, I th- so he because he had a he has a family, which he recently left. I don't know if he left his job behind. I'm kind of thinking he must have, or at least that's the way it seems. I haven't gotten an email from him in a while. I don't bother the guy. Why should I? You know, I mean, he already put out a lot of material, and it stands on its own merit. But i got to tell you, people like Wes Penry, I do respect him, but I've always said I don't think that everything he's ever written is 100% accurate. <laughs> Excuse me. I've been drinking <laughs> coffee. <laughs> I've been drinking a lot of coffee lately. <sighs> uh, so anyway... I, I do appreciate the work that Wes Penray has put together, but uh, I've always said that, you know, it's not really, it's my opinion, not 100% accurate. It was one of the reasons I reached out to Wes and I shared some of my clues or whatever insights with him. And um, that's how we came, I, I, that's how we became in correspondence. I would like to think we're colleagues. However, something's happened to him recently. He's with another woman or I don't know. I mean, it doesn't seem like she's this person is using a real name. And they've been putting out these YouTube videos with the computer voice, which I, a lot of people have asked me, what happened to the real Wes Penray? Well, I, like, I would know. I don't know. It does seem strange. I got to p- tell you. And what's happening, too, is a lot of people are capturing that stuff and using it on their own YouTube channels. You know, to, and which to, that is also kind of strange. Because I, I just seeing like, and they're chopping it up and doing whatever and adding visuals. And, okay, so here's the bottom line. Here's what somebody wrote to me. Hi, Robert. Wanted to give you an update on a little research I did concerning Wes Penray. He recently did an interview with someone named Mark 
and Linda Cummings. No big deal, right? But I did a little background research on these two people. It turns out they're both transgendered and have been trying to make it big since 2012. Long story short, Mark is a convicted pedophile, and Lina, also known as Arielle Cummings, who won a transgendered award back in 2010 or 12, called the GLAD, has won the, this award. It was called the GLAD Award. Does this sound familiar? Ariel Glad. Uh, well, okay, that's a bit of a stretch, but yeah, I get where you're coming from. Uh, the, this person says, I've never been one to believe in coincidences, and I feel whatever hidden hand is behind this, sh this has shown everyone with eyes that see and ears that hear exactly what's going on. I don't know about you, but the West Penry I remember would never have done an interview with a transgender couple, let alone a convicted pedophile. Wes has also recently started a Patreon account with around 100 subscribers already and is taking in, you know, subscription amounts, or actually those are donations. But okay, the real Wes Penry was always very humble and never asked for money. Yeah, because he had a full-time job. I think he was working in the medical industry. And he did the research because he felt it was a calling and wanted to share it with the world. And yeah, that's true. The one thing I cannot pinpoint is Mark and this person, Mark, persons, Mark and Lina, L-Y-N-N-A, that's how I pronounce it, Lina, have produced a video that Wes Penray had apparently sent them. I feel like they found a double or someone that might look very similar to him. I feel the real Wes Penray is in a cabin somewhere with no internet, just trying to find his way back home. Like, not meaning out of the matrix. Um, well, look, <laughs> it's been in the news recently that Artificial intelligence can literally create a copy of anybody and uh, make a digital copy, and you can put that on the internet. It'll it'll sound and look enough like them. It would definitely fool most of us. That's for sure. Um, I think it's already been out there for a while for the intelligence agencies, but yeah, this has become available to certain individuals. And as you're going to learn as we go, get into this particular episode today, which I think is going to rip right by you, <laughs> it's, it's already, I can't believe we're almost up on the end of this particular first first segment already mind control you've heard of it mk ultra yeah it's real and a lot of it has to do with drugs it's not all just signals in that regard we're all direct what do they call uh targeted individuals and it's not new this has been going on for a very 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 long time as far as historically on this planet well or what we think of as our history it's actually a blip in the bigger picture but yeah, mind control? Why? Well, this is how the dark side operates. This is how a lot of us would have been fooled into believing that a rebellion against the rest of our family, call them what you will, God, angels, or I don't know, aliens, maybe, um, which is kind of a silly term because they're not alien at all. They're not foreign. That's what it means. Alien means foreigner. So they're not foreign to us. But we've been led to believe this. So anyway, I do think that mind control is a huge, huge part of it. And uh, drugs play a role in that. Obviously, electronic signals is another one. Um, and just this manipulation constantly with information or false lies. There's a, We are being lied to all the time. I, that's what I told you yesterday. How would you know if someone in a world full of lies and someone brings you truth, even if it's, even if it's not 100% accurate, how would you know? How would you know? It takes effort. I mean, it's taken me. I look, I'm, I'm not saying I have all the answers or I'm the brightest person on the planet. In fact, I know that I'm, I'm pretty dull sometimes when it comes to trying, or slow, to say the least, when it comes to figuring certain things out. But I'm tenacious. I stick with it. And I, I, you know, I'm determined to try and get at the truth as much as possible in the midst of all these lies. So... Okay, so I, I, let me finish up real quick with this particular email. This person wrote, On a better note, I just want to thank you for your continued work. I really enjoyed your last podcast about the book, The Way Home. It really inspired me to definitely take a deeper look inside. When I was 18, I had a psychic tell me that I didn't come to this planet very often and that the Creator had sent me here to observe that I'm one of his preachers, for lack of a better term. Well, he's, this individual says, I always thought to observe what? 
But after listening to your podcast, this old memory came rushing back. Perhaps the author of that book is right, and the majority of people here are fallen angels. That actually resonates with me. From my own personal recollection, or should I say mostly dreams, I can remember the electric wars. I still have dreams about protecting a mainframe, again, for lack of better words. We are a team of seven strong, and these infiltrators have yet to get in, but the dreams are very vivid, energetically draining, and they feel more real than life itself. It usually takes me a week to recover afterwards. Anyway, I've taken enough of your time, but extremely grateful for you, Robert, and thank you again from the bottom of my heart for everything you do for humanity. Wow, okay, you know, uh, thanks, thank you. Uh, I don't really have permission to say who this is, but it's like, I obviously, this, this, I feel like we're going down the right path. I, and for me anyway, okay? You decide for yourself. There's no pressure. But uh, I, I don't think we're going to be able to continue down this path forever. That that much doesn't seem right because, like I said, the the life support systems are actually uh, that that the new <laughs> the newest uh, socialist slash communist spokesperson has been saying uh, that uh, we're all going to die of global warming in twelve years. Whatever. I don't know. I I, I really I, nobody knows that for sure. But the Green Deal doesn't sound like a real deal to me. It's like more of a deception. I, I'm just, I've actually have had a, enough, more than enough of politicians um, lecturing me, us, saying how we need to do this and we need to do that. Uh, it, it's, it's ludicrous. I don't know why anybody would follow their lead because they seem really confused and corrupt and, and, uh, I mean, I know that's their job, but I get really tired of it at, at some point. I, the only reason I'm listening is it's more like I'm monitoring them just to see what are they telling people. Uh, I think I know why. I think I know why. Here's one other Here's one other email. Uh, she says, I really admire your tenacity and strength for trying to get to the truth no matter what. When I was reading Wes Penry's work back in 2012, my intuition went towards the possibility that we are f the fallen angels. And back then I mentioned it to Wes in an email, but I got no response. And then I started to read the book off your website, The Way Home, and I was blown away by what God stands for, Guardian of Divinity. And I woke up at 3 a.m. and there was your podcast about talking about this book. She says, I'll do anything to get back home and will take full responsibility for whatever I have done in the past. Oh, I, and I also hope you forgive yourself because that's a big part of this uh, reforming, reforming, the healing process, re rehabilitating one's soul. She says, do we really need to sharpen our gut intuition? And why is the truth so hard to figure out while we're here? <laughs> hope you're well, love, blah, blah, blah. Okay, yeah, good. Um, yeah, it's hard. It's really difficult. Gut, follow your gut, sure, and your heart. I also think telepathy is a big part of it, and of course we're told that that's nonsense, or maybe there's something wrong with us. But again, I saw I heard Jimmy Church was talking to this rabbi, and he, he, the rabbi said, "You know what? Our ancestors knew that that was exactly how we communicated with the rest of our relatives off-world, was telepathically, even so-called God, that they could see the words, or they saw the message in their mind's eye." Okay, because that's what telepathy is. It's not just hearing words or seeing letters. It's a, it's a, almost like a, like a video. I mean, it's a lot like that, except you're, you're seeing it, you're feeling it. You're, it's like downloading something on a whole other level. It's a very, very complete form of communication. Um, and it transcends a lot of boundaries that have been erected here. Again, I believe that is to control us and manipulate us by the dark side. So... Man, there's there's uh, there's another guy too that's uh, obviously it struck a chord or a nerve or whatever you want to call it with people going down this particular path. An, an author wrote to me saying he uh, he uh, one of the people that follows my work must have sent him my email and said you needed to speak to Robert Stanley because he published a book recently called The Identity of God. Yeah, it's out there. 
And he says, in this book I wrote, I take up where Sitchin left off on identifying the God of Abraham in the Torah. Using clues I found in scripture, I pinpoint the identity of which extraterrestrial is the God of Abraham. I'd like to be a guest in a future program with you. Uh, please let me know if that's possible. So I've reached out to this particular individual, and we'll see what happens. I, I just never know. I really don't know, but I feel like we're going to find out. That's my intention. I think we all have a right to know what is going on. Who are we, really? How do we get here? More importantly, how do we get out? Are we going to stick around and the dark side leaves, or is it vice versa? I'm not sure. Either way, I do think there has to be a parting of the ways, because the people that are really on the dark side of the force, uh, they seem to be doubling down on it. If you just, just look at the news, you see these so-called protests and whatever, these protesters are extremely pissed off. They're not thinking straight. They're not civil, and uh, and they're not reasonable in the sense that they're not willing to even have a discussion. It just it turns into a, you know, it's either verbal aggression or physical violence or, you know, I mean, it's just, it's, it's not a good situation, clearly. And something needs to happen, so uh, it's good, like I said, the future is going to be a very interesting place for all of us, so hang on to your hats. We're up against our first break. You are listening to the Unicus Radio Hour. I'm your Jedi host, Robert Stanley, podcasting from Hong Kong and the greatest alternative talk radio station on the planet, KJRA. We'll be right back after these messages. Thank you. Do you want to lose weight but have no idea where to begin? The Fast Start Diet, a three-day weight loss plan, is the answer. Three days of nutritionally balanced, calorie-restricted meals delivered right to your door. No shopping, no measuring, and no cooking. Everything is prepared for you and ready to eat at home or on the go. The Fast Start Diet has all the amazing benefits of intermittent fasting without starving. We've helped thousands of people who have struggled to reach their weight loss goals. Isn't it time we helped you? With the Fast Start Diet, you'll lose weight and feel great. Find us on Amazon or go to faststartdiet.com and use promo code POWERSAVE to get 10% off your first box. And as a special bonus, we will include our number one rated appetite suppressant spray free with your order. Whatever your diet plans are, start with us at faststartdiet.com and use promo code POWERSAVE. Okay, nurse, let's get this man to the ER, stat. Right away, doctor. We see this every day. Heart attack or angina pain due to blocked and clogged arteries. Chelation can remove obstructions or blockages from arteries and help avoid painful and expensive surgery. Now there's Angioprim. It's a liquid oral chelation product that you take with juice. You start to feel the results fast. Angioprim increases blood flow all over the body, and that means more energy and strength to take on the day with less aches and pains. 60 years of research has gone into chelation, and Angioprim is the result. A safe and easy way to unblock your veins and arteries from buildup that slow circulation. Paging Dr. Jones, please report to the emergency room right away. Log on now for a special radio offer from Angioprim. That's angioprim.com slash radio. A-N-G-I-O-P-R-I-M. Angioprim.com slash radio or call 877-882-7221. That's 877-882-7221. When you're always on the go, it can be a hassle getting the proper servings of veggies and fruits into your everyday diet. Life gets hectic, making it hard for us to always make healthy food choices, not to mention it's pretty expensive. Wouldn't it be great to ditch the long grocery store lines but still get your fruits and veggies all at once? What you need is Balance of Nature Fruits and Veggies Capsules, made with 31 of the highest quality fruits and vegetables and grown right here in the USA. Balance of Nature is 100% natural, safe, and affordable. For a limited time, use discount code TALK and you'll get 35% off your first preferred set of Balance of Nature fruit and veggie capsules, along with free shipping. Call 1-800-246-8751 today. Ready for the real results you want and need? Then you need Balance of Nature. Call 1-800-246-8751. That's 1-800-246-8751 and use code TALK. 
You listen to us, and we listen to you. And so does the CIA. <laughs> KGRARadio.com. Pat Robertson has written in a book a few years ago that we should have a world government, but only when the Messiah arrives. <laughs> he wrote, and literally, any attempt to achieve world order before that time must be the work of the devil. Well, join me. I, I'm glad to sit here at the right hand of Satan. And that's the way it is. Welcome back to the Unicus Radio Hour. I'm your Jedi host, Robert Stanley, podcasting from Hong Kong on the greatest alternative talk radio station on the planet, KGRA. Thanks for sticking with us through the break. Yeah, that was good old Walt. Uh... I don't know. I think that the people in the news media have always been difficult, to say the least, when it comes to, uh, I think that they're challenged when it comes to telling the truth, and uh, very good at manipulating the ma the masses. So uh, that, that was just a little insight there to, you know, <laughs> that guy was America's anchor man for a long time. I remember growing up with that that guy, some of the stuff that he was saying. Anyway, uh, I was going to tell you, oh yes, I thought it was in very interesting that the people were laughing when he said the Messiah would come back. Well, uh, let's just be clear about something here. Um, like I said, I don't agree with everything that's in that book, The Way Home, that's on my website at unicusmagazine.com. But I, and I've, I, and the thing is, I'm starting to like re-examine a lot of different aspects of so-called reality here. And uh, the name Jesus was obviously not used back in those days, but it is now. And I think we're confusing that particular incarnation of that individual with the totality of the soul that came here for a specific mission. So when it says in that book, The Way Home, that, you know, Jesus is the master, is the original master Jedi, well, that wouldn't that doesn't mean that when he, when he was born as a child, that that was the beginning of the Jedi Order. It says more clearly, if you really think about it, excuse me, that soul of Jesus came here and was a very old and wise soul that, and who had not fallen from grace. He still retained his divinity. And it was a sacrifice, it was an act of love for him to come here among us and, and give us an opportunity to actually get our act together and hopefully leave, go home. I'm not sure, but it says in that book that he's is Prince Michael, also known as uh, Prince Enlil, I think to some you would recognize that. And he's not the eldest son of Anu, King Anu also known as King and Lil. So the, all these names, it gets really kind of confusing. I still don't know for sure who is Jesus, but if, if he was Michael or Enlil, Prince Enlil, that would make sense because he's in, apparently in direct opposition to his brother, Enki, also known as Lucifer. Now, look, please don't write to me about this. I know I know what Sinchin said, I, but I again, my position on this is if I didn't make it clear enough already, I think Sitchin was a pawn. He was a puppet. He was a PR person for Enki and his minions who started the rebellion in heaven. You notice how that's never mentioned in the books? Sitchin's books are all basically just an uh, apology tour, more, and it's more the blame game, how Enki's a victim of his family that they're persecuting him, and he's such a good guy, and he's basically our father and our savior. So some things are starting to make sense to me. I think really getting a bit bigger picture on all of these things. And it's possible that um, this particular creation certainly was divine, I think, in the past, and it's been corrupted. Now, how that all happened is, again, it's a matter of conjecture. We really don't know for sure because all of the records, as far as I can tell, have been either destroyed or distorted. We really don't know for sure. So there's a lot of speculation. But um, I want to believe that there really was a paradise here 
and that there is a benign, benevolent creator or creators, and that we are all related, and that there was something went wrong, something went horribly wrong. You know, I've discussed this many times before in many different ways. But, uh, I, you know, look, I don't think we can ever actually nail this down, spe specifically not on a show like this. We, all we can do is ask some questions and maybe hopefully come up with some answers. It, it's, it, again, it's really hard to say. Somebody sent me another book since we're talking about Lucifer. I, I get this a lot now that I started down this road. Somebody wrote a book called Morningstar's Tale. It's a novel, okay? And um, I think the author sent me this book. This happens a lot, too. You know if you've... Well, you would know. Uh, I've been doing this ever since 1990, when I was the editor of Unicus Magazine. A lot of people that are books and authors of just whatever, or messengers, they, they want... They need a medium. So you know, the magazine was the original platform, and then ultimately we started doing television and then radio and... Um, yeah, it's kind of evolved. Anyway, so I get a lot of um, solicitation from people that, you know, some of it's very interesting, some of it, well, doesn't resonate at all. But this particular book, this novel, and I'm not a fan of novels, but this one <laughs> spoke to me again because the timing of it all, right? It figures, I'm looking for it, so here it is, Morningstar's Tale. Preface, recently, the light bearer, that would be Lucifer, I mean, that's what Lucifer means, disclosed the mysteries of his occultic kingdom, meaning the hidden kingdom, including the physical and spiritual laws that govern the universe. Knowing the vast majority of humans would reject his uncomfortable truth, the father of lies proceeded to write a book revealing the hidden secrets of antiquity. When asked about his motivation for such an endeavor, Luc Lucifer also known as Enki, scornfully laughed and replied, it was an experiment for his own twisted amusement. Hmm. As he predicted, the reception of his book, Morning Star's Tale, was met with universal scorn, ridicule, and derision. Summarily dismissed as the rantings of a madman, which is ironic because this was his only honest revelation, and naturally it was relegated to the dustbin of failed novellas. And equally... As expected, uh, Mr. Morningstar, Lucifer, Anki, was delighted because he likes to mess with people's minds. He's very much a, well, he's a control freak, I guess you call it. So catching up here, let's see, chapter one, here's a quote from Francis Bacon. The desire of power in excess caused the angels to fall. The desire of knowledge in excess caused man to fall. Is that weird? I mean, again, I'm maybe I'm reading into this, but this is this is interesting because here is a book supposedly, just like the Lost Book of Enki. That's you know that's all Sitchin's channeled stuff. It's it's not like taken directly from cuneiform tablets. He actually just wrote that out of <laughs> uh, his mind, his imagination, or was it being channeled telepathically to him? I would say it was the latter. So, because I'm sure he was in contact, his friends, or at least one particular friend from Italy, said this on the record that Zachariah was in, he was in contact with these Anunnaki or fallen angels or whatever you want to call them. Rebels. Rebels, yeah. I think, I think that's more accurate. So, I'm not going to read you this book. I may put it up at some point if the author permits me. I kind of don't think so. I think he wants to sell this. So, and I probably shouldn't even read it then, other than I just gave you a little taste of it. I thought it was very fascinating. I'll give you, tell you what, chapter one, cap, catching up. Chapter two, planet Earth isn't, okay. Hollow moon, flat and sunny, glue of you, nephilim, Kabbalah's root, etc. You know, whatever. I, again, I'm not a fan of novels. If I'm going to read something, I want to read something that's supposedly true. Because I'm looking for clues. I, I want some information, some real information that's valid and accurate. So, um, I was going to say, oh, yeah, right. People were, and I, I knew this would happen, that some people are going to be upset. This particular, the other book that I do have up on the website, The Way Home. Yeah, well, it's, it sounds sexist, to say the least. It, it relegates women to a position of um, 
a lower position because they apparently are more easily manipulated by Satan or Lucifer or whatever, the devil, okay? And the author actually gives a very good rationale for this, which I hadn't really thought of before until I really sat down and read this. Now, look, I told you yesterday, statistically, and this was actually in the news recently, most people don't read. And most people that do read, that at least that I've come across, are very superficial. They skim it. They skim because they're, I guess, they feel like they're in a big hurry to do whatever. Um, in fact, this one room, woman did read the book, but she started from the back, which I don't understand that, but okay, whatever, it's fine, you do whatever you want. But she skimmed through it very quickly. Again, it's only 100 pages, but you know, she's not the first person who's told me that they just read it in like an hour. I don't know how much you can possibly comprehend or contemplate in just an hour. If you're just speed reading it, it's just words flying by your eyes and it doesn't really touch your heart or soul in a way that I, th that I think is going to be beneficial. Again, now this is my perspective. And like I said, you know, anybody who's actually reading, that's great. It's better than not. But um, one gentleman who's a physicist, a uh, friend of mine, he likes to take these books and put them onto what the, uh, uh, the computer and have it read to him, which I, f I think is imp just impossible to get the actual meaning. It's not meant to be digested that way. But again, do whatever you like, all right? Let's get back to what I was saying before. Uh, I was trying to get to the point here about women and men. Our souls are neither. However, when we come into a particular lifetime, we are assigned either a male or female body. And this seems to be an issue when it comes to, the, like, right recently, this whole thing about transgenderism, which is, to me, um, doesn't make any sense on the face of it. You can't change your gender. You can change your, you can alter your body parts, but your chromosomes are going to stay the, what they are. You either, you're born a male or female. And um, apparently there's a reason for this, according to the author of this book. And I'm willing to entertain the possibility that's, that's, that's accurate. But specifically, what he's saying in the beginning of this, this whole issue of us being rebels, fallen angels, that we started a war in order to, well, we didn't. We participated in a, uh, a civil war, a family feud, to, in order to take control and turn everything into a different direction. And if it's anything like the direction this world is going, it couldn't be good. And I'm pretty sure that's why God and his son, or let's just say Lucifer's family, immediate family, were pretty upset that he was doing that. And they realized that he, what he was, his intention was going to lead to a disaster. So we who followed him, rather than being annihilated or exterminated or executed, whatever you want to call it, for our rebellion, we were imprisoned here in order to be reformed, given an opportunity, okay? And so this is the deal, if, according to this particular author, his interpretation of the Garden of Eden, or Eden, which I always found very confusing because I don't think an apple by itself could, could cause all these problems. However, the context, again, the context is everything. So he says here that the prison that, that had been designed and created for us as souls, we were locked inside, inside not only the prison, but in a human form for the first time. And that's when the teaching and testing process began. That's part of the reforming uh, of us. Rehabilitation, I should say. I, I prefer the word rehabilitate. He says, The first and very simple test was in the Garden of Eden when the devil tempted Eve with the apple. I'm not sure it was an apple, but whatever, just for the sake of argument. The devil told Eve that if she ate the apple, she would become like God, which was a lie. And because she was more easily influenced than Adam on a spiritual level and having less willpower, therefore more easily used by the devil, she gave in to temptation, disobeyed God, and ate the apple. 
oh, I should re- I should mention what he claims the author here. Whatever he he uses the name Ja, but I know that's not his name, so I, I don't gotta I don't want to keep repeating it. Just say call him the author. He claims that when God or whoever whatever God is imprison us here, he the higher ranking rebels were placed in female bodies. And there was this was a deliberate decision. And I think I'll get to that later, but it just it was an interesting aside. I didn't really think of these these little dynamics, these details are fascinating to me. Again, I'm not saying it's 100% accurate. It's just something that, you know, it's worth considering it instead of just rejecting it out of hand, which I know most people are very easily well, we're all kind of just we're on edge right now. We're being provoked. I know that for a fact. It's coming from the dark side. They don't want us to actually be calm and kind and creative. And ultimately, you know, we're distracted by all these things right now. Excuse me. God, I should probably not drink so much coffee. <laughs> and I talk about the dark side. Okay, so Satan tempted Eve first. Instead of tempting Adam, because he knew that she would be more likely to give in. Eve, having failed her own test, was not content with that. She had to get Adam into trouble, too. Again, this is according to the author. God, the Lord, measures the soul by its power to resist temptation from Satan and by the good it does for others. Um, Yeah, and you know, the other thing is, he says that uh, telepathically, we're connected to God. When, when we're quiet, when we allow ourselves to listen to that voice, the voice, the knowledge of good is always there. However, we also, because of what happened in the so-called garden, the very beginning of us being imprisoned here, this this rehabilitation and this reformatory is what the author calls it, we had the ability to directly hear God through telepathy and communicate with him. However, at some point we we gave in and we started to be able to hear the voice of the dark side, Satan, devil, Lucifer, whatever you want to call it. So we literally do have uh, these two voices competing in our heads. And I know most people don't want to admit this, but if you want to be honest with yourself, um, I mean, I know it happens to me. I know it happens to a lot of people because they've written to me and up until recently, I was thinking, well, that must be external, you know, somehow we were put here by a benevolent God, we have our divinity, etc., etc., so we must, this, this, we're being possessed by these, these dark spirits, and where the hell did they come from? Well, this is a whole new aspect of this dynamic that I had never considered before. The reason it's so easy for us to be possessed is because, well, we're part of the dark side. And, of course, there's a lot of us that have made incredible progress towards moving away from that, even though it's incredibly difficult here to do that. I do. I really do feel like, you know, that there's some validity to the, all this. Or I wouldn't even be mentioning it. Um, I, I've always felt that this was a very isolated world in the sense that it, it, this could not be the, uh, the condition of the creation in, at, in toto. It's not... The rest of creation is not like Earth. Let's put it that way. I'm trying to be very specific about the words I use, okay? Because I, clarity is important. It's very easy to misconstrue what people say, especially these days. Um, okay, so anyway, we're getting back to the garden here. She, she is, um, she's been told not to eat the apple, but she does it anyway because she, she believes the lie. She believes the lie. She convinces or influences Adam to do the same, and that is when things went incredibly wrong for us. We would have had a much lighter sentence. Things would have... uh, Now, again, I should say, this is alleged, but it kind of makes sense to me. If you're put into a prison and you don't follow the rules and you really cause trouble, you're going to be penalized even further, and your sentence will be... Uh, protracted. You'll you'll actually stay in there longer, and if you keep causing trouble, they might even put you in uh, solitary confinement. 
because you're causing you're actually starting to to infect the minds or affect others that are imprisoned as well and you know why is that important well because uh, in the prison system there are actually some really good people for whatever reason they ended up there okay yeah they either made a mistake or they were wrongfully accused but I have met people that are I mean I know them that that they are good people and that actually being in prison gave them an opportunity to actually uh, be better be better every day in every way I know that sounds weird but it certainly is motivational <laughs> if you're in a situation like that all you want to do is get out and you, th you see opportunities to do good, you do it. Sometimes you'll even go above and beyond what you thought you were capable of because, well, you know, when you're in that situation, as opposed to just sitting there fat, dumb, and happy on your couch watching TV or playing games or something, you, you know, I'm just saying, that's how we're, that's how we're designed. We need some motivation. Um, and sometimes these, these motivators are very uncomfortable. It gets us out of our comfort zone, okay? That's all, that's all I'm trying to say. All right. He says, uh, the serpent that tempted Eve was Satan, having tricked Eve, caused her to fail her test, then manipulated her and used her to attack Adam using her sex appeal. Adam then also failed his first test because he foolishly loved Eve more than God and doing good and followed her advice instead of God's advice. Well, actually, it wasn't advice. It was a, it was a directive. Again, in prison, they don't just give you advice, although they might. Typically, these are all rules, and you don't break the rules, otherwise you're punished on top of whatever your sentence might be. So this simple story of Adam and Eve, and the trees of knowledge of good, meaning God, and the knowledge of evil, the devil, seem never to have been understood by anyone on earth, and yet it is very straightforward and easy to understand. Yeah, well, maybe for the author, I don't know. I've always kind of shied away from it, because I thought it just seemed really convoluted and strange and crazy. He says, God walked in the Garden of Eden with Adam and Eve and talked with them, teaching them to eat the knowledge of good, meaning digesting his truth, and warned them not to eat from the tree of the knowledge of evil, meaning Satan's lies, or they would die, meaning that their physical bodies would die. They weren't real originally designed to die. Our physical bodies, and this doesn't seem far-fetched to me at all, that we could have, that... A benevolent, loving creator, God, guardian, would have, under those circumstances, uh, planned out a rehabilitation process that was far more gentle than what we're experiencing here now. But apparently, uh, we've not only, it's, that wasn't even a test. We just didn't follow the rules adequately, and ultimately we suffered the consequences. So that's what the so-called original sin, if you're religious, that's... No, the original sin was the rebellion in heaven. The second sin that we committed, our, our aunt, <laughs> and this is a group thing, by the way, although we're individuals, apparently we agreed collectively to rebel against God, the creator, the rest of our family, whatever you want to call it, under false pretenses. And so we are suffering the consequences because of that, individually and collectively. That's kind of weird, but that's that's how it works, all right? You can kind of see this with the drug cartels now, uh, specifically this guy El Chapo, I think they call him. And they're, they're just all this infighting, and his girlfriend basically threw him under the bus. And I don't know, did she just... <laughs> The whole thing, it's like, uh, oh, it's ugly. So, so Adam and Eve ate from the tree of knowledge of evil. And, uh, and that's how they became aware of the fact that there was good and evil. And they became confused. And in their confusion, they would never find their way home and would die physically, meaning they'd have to be born again and again in order to have even an opportunity to learn the error of their ways, and ultimately uh, be rehabilitated. So in other words, it made it way harder. And this was the intent all along, coming from Lucifer and the rest of the Archon or 
whatever you want to call the dark forces, all right? I, I, I think it's easier to just call them dark forces. But you know what I'm talking about, right? And um, their whole goal has been to use mind control over us at various levels by deceiving us, confusing us, tricking us, whatever, to manipulate us into um, making bad choices. Ultimately, I mean, the, the, when I say bad, I'm saying the end result is clearly not good. So it must be bad, all right? This is not a judgment. It's an observation. This is really not good. And I think it is worth debating it or at least considering it more carefully. How do we get into this mess? Because I think that's the only way we're going to know how to get out of it. You know, and again, religion by itself is not really, for me anyway, it didn't offer any clarity. I think the context was extremely convoluted. And again, I do think this was the work of the dark side. Which is, it's, I know it's ironic, but that's, or moronic actually, it's sometimes, but we know this is true. Corruption in the churches and various cults and whatnot, it's all designed to deceive us under the false pretense that there's somehow, they exist to actually save us or enlighten us, right? I hope I'm right. I mean, I want to be accurate with you as much as possible. We're up against another break, ladies and gentlemen. You're listening to the Unicus Radio Hour, and I am, believe it or not, your Jedi host, Robert Stanley, podcasting from Hong Kong on the greatest alternative talk radio station on the planet, KGRA. We'll be right back. Thank you. Hi, folks. CBD is the home run hitter for health right now. Why, you ask? Because of what it does for the body. Unfortunately, I can't tell you all about the benefits. You know, there's reasons. Do your due diligence and log on to ancientlifeoil.com. That's ancientlifeoil.com. Ancient Life Oil uses organic ingredients and is blended in coconut oil for some of the best benefits. Legal in 50 states and non-psychoactive. Log on to ancientlifeoil.com. That's ancientlifeoil.com. Reclaim your active lifestyle with Angioprim. Angioprim is the original liquid oral chelation supplement. Chelation helps remove toxins, heavy metals, and cholesterol in your veins and arteries that can cause blockages. Scientific research proves the active ingredient in Angioprim has superior oral chelation action that helps promote cardiovascular health. Find out more. Go to angioprim.com. Talk to a trained consultant by calling Angioprim toll-free, 877-882-7221. So you love talk radio, then you'll love TalkStreamLive.com. TalkStream Live is always on, 24-7 with the best streaming talk shows. Find your favorite talkers and discover some new ones. It's free, readily available online or on mobile with any smartphone or tablet. Finding your favorite talk shows all in one place has gotten a whole lot easier. Just go to TalkStreamLive.com. Be sure to download the free apps from Google Play or the iTunes App Store. If you have hard water, the lime scale not only leaves white spots, it clogs pipes and breaks down appliances, costing you hundreds of dollars in energy and wear. Eliminate lime scale and other water issues like brown staining and bad odors with HydroCare water products available from Wave Home Solutions. Wave's affordable water systems don't use salts or chemicals. You'll love the way your water tastes, smells, and looks. Satisfaction guaranteed. For more information, go to bestwater123.com. That's bestwater123.com. There are many sounds in your day-to-day life. There are sounds that wake you up. Sounds that make you smile. (laughs) Sounds that energize you. (laughs) And sounds that help you relax. But there are some sounds that can alert you to danger and can help save lives. Wireless Emergency Alerts, now on many mobile devices. Use a unique sound and vibration to bring you information about severe weather events, amber alerts, or other emergencies in your area. With critical information from local sources you know and trust, you can be in the know, wherever you are. For more information, visit ready.gov alerts. Brought to you by FEMA and the Ad Council. Now you have the inside contact for Alternative Talk Radio. The Planet. KGRARadio.com.
Welcome back to the Unicus Radio Hour. I'm your Jedi host, Robert Stanley, podcasting from Hong Kong on the greatest alternative talk radio station on the planet, KGRA. Thanks for sticking with us through the break. Hope you are finding this interesting. I know I am. That's why I'm still here doing this. Uh, believe me, I have other things to do, but they're not as important as spending some time with you. So uh, there are, as I said, I'm finding all kinds of clues everywhere now, or let's just say it's just sort of popping up on my radar. And I wanted to share something with you. Um, I know a lot of people are not fans of Alex Jones. I'm not either. I'm not saying he just has a very weird presentation style, but he's interviewed someone recently. I mean, literally the other day, they were talking about these fallen angels and the role that they play, the interactivity with mankind and uh, how that's all coming to a head. I mean, it's all being exposed. I, I told you, I'm hearing people, other talk show hosts, that are bringing this up a lot. And it isn't really alternative media the way we think of, like, like you know, paranormal stuff. It's just these guys are talking about daily affairs. They're trying to understand it. They're putting, trying to have it in the proper context. And this comes up. So I, I'm going to give you some clips here. Just what I think is the most salient points of a discussion by uh, Alex Jones, a guy named Jan Irvin. Never heard of him. Fascinating gentleman. Uh, really, really interesting guy. And he clearly knows something about the mind control, using drugs, and these demonic forces. And so I'm going to let you hear this for yourself, okay? Why are they trying to overthrow our health, our vision, our intelligence, promising us some promised land, uh, but really, just like all the other cultures that took these drugs, opened up these gates to lower dimensions, uh, the only uh, revelation they get is from some very fallen, nasty creatures. Well, Aldous Huxley called it the final revolution, and uh, he wanted to get people so dumbed down to a point from drugs. Uh, in the Brave New World, he calls it Soma, etc. Uh, in other articles, uh, he talks about dumbing them down with barbiturates, but it was the final revolution. He wanted people so dumbed down, uh, alpha, betas, deltas, epsilons, etc., that they could not uh, rebel. I just want to add, this is very fascinating to me, that he's saying, this author is saying that the dark side does not want us to rebel against the rebels. They don't us. They really don't want us to become rehabilitated, and that's the the whole crux of this matter. All right, just had to point that out. Here's a bit more of that exchange. They are all a part of this agenda just to create this final revolution so that the people can never uh, revolt again against uh, the elite and stand up against all of this stuff. So they sell pseudo-spirituality. I realized that the whole thing was a fraud. And, yes, you know, they didn't they discover mushrooms. The, 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 the Vikings were taking them 20,000 years ago. But, but, but let's just stop right there. I, I don't even know about that. But, you know, we do know that the Aztecs were using uh, this stuff to, uh, you know, to mind control their, their victims, like at Montezuma, Montezuma's coronation. He had up to 8,000 uh, human sacrifices of slaves. And uh, there was a researcher, Singer, back in the uh, 50s or 60s that Wasson got into a tiff with because Singer had exposed that the uh, Aztecs were using the mushrooms to uh, prepare their victims for human sacrifice. And I have, and this is from the 1500s, and when the sacrifices had finished on the steps of the courtyard, uh, or the steps of the courtyard were bathed in human blood, everyone went to eat raw mushrooms. With this food, they went out of their minds and were in a worse state than if then if they had drank a great quantity of wine, they became so inebriated and witless that many of them took their lives with their own hands. And then uh, under the strong influence of these mushrooms, they saw visions and had revelations about the future since the devil spoke to them in their drunken madness. But uh, all of this has been published for 500 years. They've hidden it and no, I totally uh, agree. It, and, and, and inverted it into a religion. The Bible warns of all the different tribes getting into pharmacia and how that opened up gates to the devil. And, I, and I think clearly, though, they've dug up stuff all over Europe. And I have family that were archaeologists. And they do find that everybody had the apothecary who a lot of times was taking some of his own stuff and would get into darkness because they were taking it. Well, witchcraft. But Genesis 3 warns against this stuff, too. No, I, I know. But I think to say that every ancient culture had this going on, places where it took over, you had the Aztecs where the demons told them, kill everybody who's handsome and smart. I mean, it, it's, it's, it's insane. 
It's a, it's a damn, like, evil interdimensional broadcast. Kill yourself, kill yourself, kill yourselves. And now it's all over the news. Washington Post. CIA infiltrated 17 area groups, gave out LSD. Okay, this is from the 60s. This came out in 1973, a year before I was born. Panel finds CIA broke law, defends record. So there you go. And I've talked to family that was at UT in the mid-60s, and the government was there putting out the LSD on campus. I can tell you. And so it goes way beyond that. Now they're giving you the super hardcore mind control drugs that they believe open up a dimensional gate where they are given advanced knowledge. Uh, but but to, 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 to then build what the entities want built on this side to open a gate uh, or turn their atmosphere into what they're building. They're changing our world into theirs. Now, people can say, this is crazy. No, no, I'm telling you from research what the adherents in Silicon Valley think. Why Tim Cook's got eyes the size of saucers under big lights? Because the guy is on some type of high-tech drug. And they're all literally on drugs all the time. It's admitted mainstream news, quote, microdosing. Well, that's how they trick you to start taking it every day. They're not microdosing, they're megadosing. And it's why they all die so young, like Steve Jobs. Do they not know the bigger, more sinister uh, interdimensional invasion plan that this really is? And yes, folks, that's what it is. Next year's news today. In a couple of years, you'll hear this everywhere. And people are going to be like, I'm with the invasion. I'm with what they're offering. It's why these billionaire people are saying that we're really alternate dimensions and this one is held by something sinister and we're going to build alternate dimensions and we're going to have a rebellion within dimensions. The Bible again, Lucifer, the angels, one third. So they're already introducing, we're going to have reality competition. We're going to have competing realities now. But first you have to overthrow the existing logos or God's truth or you know, worshiping truth, God. So I understand what you're saying, Jan, but, but, but let's get into the adherents themselves so that they can know that we know more than they know, which is the only way to get them out of it. So if you want real knowledge below the uh, you know, dimensions you're in, but actually above them, you need to understand that this is the real way of truth. So, so, so explain to people your deep research, what you believe the end game of this is, not just ending the family and exterminating humanity, but who's running it, who's behind it, and what the DMT does, what the ayahuasca does, what these molecules do really in the brain, and why these loving entities are there, lovey, cutie caking on people, if they think they can trick you as spirit guides. If they can't, you know, they'll try to torture the hell out of you and make you die in that state. That's the real experience is why it's so dangerous. Well, the drugs cause a hyper-suggestion hyper first and foremost, and I'm glad that you brought up microdosing. That was actually launched by James, uh, Dr. James Fadiman, who was the uh, last doctor to do legal LSD research uh, under MKUltra in uh, 1970 or 71. I actually interviewed him years ago, and uh, then when I began exposing all of this, he actually came out attacking me and and trying to uh spend my research big picture for people what do they believe i mean i know what they're doing and, and i and i've actually you know talked with some of these people they believe they are in a, in 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 connection with advanced technologies and with interdimensional beings and they believe they're getting this advanced knowledge and then building these systems in this dimension and that somehow they're going to be rewarded but first they've got to reduce the world population down to basically zero they've got to merge with silicon gods uh they've got to do everything that elon musk came on joe rogan's show and repeated word for word what i said when joe asked him about the nature of reality so i'm telling people jesus is offering eternal life they're saying you get it here on this planet by loading your consciousness into a computer, but your body has to die. I was saying well, that true. 20 years ago. Now that was all over the news yesterday. So they're, they're going operational with this is what I'm saying. There was a, a doctor by the name of Dr. Andrea Puhurich working with the Esalen Institute, et cetera, uh, who ran uh, the Council of Nine, and that's exactly what they claim to have uh, been doing. He was working with uh, CIA and Mossad agent uh, Yuri Geller, and he uh, also did the Betty and Barney Hill thing. Uh, he was behind that with uh, John G. Fuller. He had worked with John G. Fuller down in uh, uh, Brazil on a lot of those uh, you know, mind control projects. John G. Fuller is who did the... Uh, Pont Saint Esprit attack on the village in France, where they killed uh, six or seven people there and dosed the entire village and made people go crazy. But uh, that was all part of uh, the CIA's MK Ultra program, ties into Andrea Purich and what you were just saying about this interdimensional stuff. Most of the groups getting you into it know that you'll never have an experience like it again. And whether you have a bad experience or good experience, they want to program you in the state that they're, your, they're the guru. 
This is how the CIA put little kids under mind control and adults. So these are mind control groups, cults operating out in the open. Be, be warned. It's all about, ladies and gentlemen, accessing certain race consciousness memories. And I just grew up hearing conversations and things with their friends over from places like San Francisco. And I remember sitting there when, when my, my, my mom's college friend who came up by a few times a year would sit there and just lay out the uh, different programs, the different groups, and this is the research they were doing, and I'd hear terms like CIA, and, and my parents weren't in that. They just knew people that were like, oh, yeah, we're out here in San Francisco, and we're testing different drugs, and, you know, we've broken through the dimensional gates, and we're communicating with the elves, the clockwork elves, and all this stuff. So I heard all that stuff for anybody put in a book. You're sitting there, a little kid, heard about elves, you know, in a conversation. It's, well, your parents are sitting around the dinner table. It's pretty interesting. My parents are straightforward, you know, professional people. Uh, and, uh, and they were Christians. They're like, well, that sounds like demons. And, and then, and then uh, the, you know, their friends like, oh, no. And when my mom really, really became a hardcore Christian over the years, her friend finally said, you know, I don't like you. You're a Christian. And we just don't want to be around you anymore. So that's what this comes down to at the final equation is that is that there's a bunch of hidden stuff. That's what a cult means going on. And the establishment doesn't want you to know what's really going on. They want to control a little bit of it and only let you see what they want you to see. And so I think that's what we're coming down to here. But you have to understand, since then, I have read what the globalists actually say in their white papers. And when they go to these billionaire Silicon Valley retreats where there's like 300 people there, they are all obsessed with what they're building and the things they've made deals with. And they can't believe how good all this stuff works that they get told. And they're all arguing how many people are going to be left on Earth. And, well, the entities say we've got to kill everybody to transcend. It kind of becomes a repeat of the Gnostic thing from thousands of years ago. we got to kill everybody and then we're all equal. Uh, and, and, and it just goes on and on, like the Muslim belief that uh, Armageddon happens, but then God just kills everybody. We don't even go to heaven. We just cease to exist. So you can't get more satanic than this. And it's a transmission. Kill yourselves. Destroy yourselves. Kill, still, and destroy. So th these demons know and attack the hell out of you. And I know people in this building who are really good people who took it, and, and it, it's experience I had without ever taking it in, in deep dreams and things when I was younger. You're basically transported to another dimension. It's like a spaceship, and there's demons, and there's people all basically, you, you can see their spirits, all it is, and they're all slaves, and there's these horrible creatures here in a lower dimension that are like torturing them forever, and then they go, oh, you're here. You're going to die. We're strangling you. Your heart ventricles are failing. We're going to rip you, and when you believe me, you'll never escape, and if you have kids, we'll get them too, and we're going to tear down your world unless you join us, and then you might be able to be at our level. Then they start threatening you like an interrogation to join them and saying, we know this, and we know that, and 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 like we're going to tell you something that's going to happen in the future. And I mean, I'm like 14 having dreams going, what the hell is this? And I'd wake up all sweaty from these and throw up like I'd been somewhere else, and then a month later, the exact thing would happen that something with freaking horns was telling me was coming down. Down. So I'm telling you, folks, why every culture talks about it, because this stuff's real. Here's the bottom line. Everybody knows this from lore. Every culture, every ancient text says that there are entities and creatures that can't be seen, just like electricity can't be seen most of the time or uh, most forms of light. And they've proven dimensions below and above and other dimensions around that. And that these entities, most of the ones that will actually contact you, because, see, God doesn't usually get involved unless you ask God in. God's free will. But these other ones, they don't. They're bad. And they'll give you knowledge and they'll give you power in a Faustian bargain. But they want your soul. That just means they want you to go with them. And these folks mean business. And if you look at how the globalists and all the top people who are being given power on this planet, they're all weak, pathetic husk of who they were who are zombie-like trying to carry out these operations because at their levels, they're horrified, empty husk. And that's what's really, really sad about all this. Well, there's a group behind them that is smart, but is totally, you never see them. They don't want any attention. They're behind the curtain.
and they are carrying out a mission. They are soldiers to turn the planet off, to teach you to hate yourself, to kill your life force, and to make you accept eternal death. They want your life. They want your soul. They want your children. They want to kill you. It's That's it. And now it's pretty obvious, isn't it, when they're at city council saying, we're going to groom your kids, and we're going to put them on drugs, and your little boys are going to be ours, and you're not going to stop us. This is the takeover, the overthrow of reality. And so if you don't understand that, you understand nothing. <clears throat> don't worry about losing your house or any of your life, folks. These people want your soul. And they want you to throw away men and women together combining the, the genetic code and creating a new creature whose body is the composite of all those ancestors coming together in communion, whose DNA literally resonates as an antenna to higher dimensions through which we literally commune with God and our ancestors. Now, the Bible, Christians groups say there is no such thing as ghosts, but then there's ghosts all throughout the Bible you know, with Saul and David and all of it. But the point is, it's not that. It's like a hologram transmission of something that was already there. Our ancestors that have gone on to higher levels then anticipated things and sent transmissions back. And the reason I know this is I've had dreams about the whole thing now, just in the last year. The whole thing diagrammed, how it all works. It's just incredible. And then I can go back into science and I can see every level of that. But I'm going ahead and laying out all the cards here on the table, okay? I mean, I haven't told you everything, folks. But um, the occultist tried to recruit me early. I mean, like 12 years old, over and over again. It was like devil's advocate. Every time I turned around, they were trying to recruit me. And I don't mean some meth heads or something. I mean rich people, powerful people, you name it. Because they all know there's these abilities. They have little bitty abilities. I have huge abilities. A lot of you have giant abilities. And they're trying to see who's got it and recruit them because they want to understand how to, how, to, how to be God at this level when you're already part of God and don't need to even do that. Let me ask this question, and you can cover whatever you want. From your experience, people need to know, though, how dangerous DMT and ayahuasca is. And again, just at a temporal level, there's cults everywhere using this stuff now, and the media is hyping it so these cults get set up, and there's usually a globalist or corporate group behind protecting them. I mean, it's illegal to put 1,000 or 2,000 people a year, mainly wealthy people they target, um, on hallucinogenic, super hardcore drugs, and then do this inside the United States. This is being protected by the system. And just at a temporal political level, there is an attempt to get the, the decision makers in every town in a cult. We're facing an occult ayahuasca DMT takeover for the humanity to make the jump level from this egg, then we'll create unlimited planets. We have to continue to have the replacement rate. That We're being sabotaged right now and told, no, the way to save the Earth is kill the species. Now, if that isn't an alien transmission, what isn't? Oh, yeah, they're always looking for signals from space. How about interdimensional signals? Oh, we're getting them. Satan, these interdimensional forces, the Bible tells us about right in plain view. It's all there on a planet in the middle of the universe. The Bible warns us it's all accurate, not the preacher's interpretations, like Christ said. And they've had holy hell, the Buddha fields here in Austin, where, oh, this guy would put you in between dimensions to talk to God, clearly giving people DMT. Oh, here, drink this. This is the water of life. And then, oh, my gosh, I'm now this guy's taking me there. Oh, think if you didn't know you were taking ayahuasca or you didn't know you were taking DMT, and then... What does everybody see? They see elves or goat creatures, even atheists. All these famous atheists go, yeah, I didn't believe in God, but then there was like floating uh, Vishnu and goats. and and and. But, but, but here's what happens. If they know beyond being a Christian, if you have God's spirit, the Holy Spirit on you, if you take DMT, and I've talked to a lot of people that are just really loving, nice people. Their parents were Christians. They were baptized. They don't really know it's real, but they're really nice people. Let me tell you something, folks. I know a lot of people who, who became mentally ill after they took this. And this was around in the 80s and 90s. They would say, oh, man, these guys, you know, these guys are from the government. They've got some new synthetic stuff. They would describe, oh, yeah, you ought to see all this cool-ass demons and stuff we see. It's, you ought to take it. Here, here, take this yellow powder when I'm like 15 years old. I'm like, no freaking thanks. So here's the deal. 
They're testing all this on you right now. They've got 20-something percent of the public on psychotropics that put you in a hallucination state, but without all the visuals. Very, very highly suggestible. That's why it says on the insert can make you be homicidal and commit mass murder. And every mass shooter, every mass shooter has been on it at schools. They all wear black trench coats. They all love the devil. They love Stalin. They love Hitler. They love shoot 'em up games. Not that shoot 'em up games are bad, but it's a simulation for them who are in another world. They all have those eyes. It's not a thousand yard stare from being in World War One or World War Two. Being up three, four days, you know, off and on for years, fighting and killing. It's the thousand yard stare from being over to the other side of oblivion and somebody else is driving. You imagine the thrill of a lower dimensional creature that sunk into a lower dimension because whatever planet or system they came from, they were hateful and bad, so they resonate to each other, like for like. Being able to jump in because you take these drugs or the TV mesmerizes you and get control of you like an avatar. Hollywood's telling you what it is. It's true, it's real. And they're jumping in and controlling you and taking you for a joyride. And what does a punk meth head do, 15 year old that steals your Ferrari? When they're done, they crap in the front seat and run it off a cliff. So you get involved with these demons. They want to crap in your front seat and run you off a cliff. Because let me tell you something. You talk about existential envy of people for folks that are better looking or smarter than them. Humans are in the image of God. So amazing, so powerful that these demons have such hatred of us because we are whole levels better than them and have the potential to go all the way up to God. And that's the big secret here today. The people who haven't read the Bible and especially the New Testament think that they're the most educated about what it says. And rather than thinking that all of us who have read it are stupid, I recommend people drop the ignorance and go out and sit down. It's only 400, 410 pages. But it's read like it a decoder yourself. ring, though. If you don't it understand is, this is. stuff. So you, is the trivium. Exactly. You don't see it. If you, I mean, once you know it, you're like, oh, wow. That's like. That's why they don't want us to read it. That's why they attack the Bible constantly. They do not want us to read it because once you read it, you see all the stuff going on, and you're going to be. Because woke. these were truly woke people that had been through it, and God isn't going to put us into a free will universe, but He gives us a cheat sheet. We're His children, but He gives us a cheat sheet. He goes, "You have free will, but kids, here's a cheat sheet. This is like the mystery of the universe type stuff. It's not the final mystery, but th this is the heavy." This is why they don't want this show out there. That's why they're not going to attack us for what we said today. They don't touch this. How discrediting is it to talk about Jones says, you know, all these interdimensional things are happening and people see elves because this is their religion, bro. You get a bunch of believers together in a real church that looking for God and justice and what does God want to do is to help humanity. You get incredible power, but it's for humanity. Other people said, no, I want this over other folks. I don't want other people around me to have this discernment too. I want the enlightenment, no one else. Then you're given the knowledge of evil. You already have the knowledge of good. The knowledge of evil. The, a viral system in the universe of predatory behavior, but it only lowers civilizations into collapse. It doesn't go upwards into that intergalactic waterfall, that light beam into the higher dimensions, into God and the great white throne room. The devil stands at the gate to that, trying to block us. Absolutely right, Alex. So, uh, you know, there's a whole lot more, you know, Alan Watts, Joseph Campbell, uh, Ken Kesey, Alistair Crowley, Carlos Castaneda, all these guys were in on it, Alan Ginsberg and William Burroughs, et cetera. All of these guys were in on MK MKUltra. Uh, you know, people need to wake up that their their psychedelic heroes and the heroes of the 60s were the real central MK Ultra program. The whole Manchurian candidate thing was a... Limited hangout, a diversion. And have you uh, not found, too, at the end of the day, it's all about vampirism, feeding on children's innocence? Pedivore is exactly right. Adrenochrome, that's what's at the top of this stuff. But, uh, you know, we've been trying to expose this stuff for about eight years now since I woke up. Let me I ask you this in closing. In Why are they fighting so hard? Is this their offensive to overthrow reality? Or is the, their offensive got backed off and this is their counteroffensive? 
I think it's their offensive to overthrow reality. I think since I started exposing a lot of this stuff uh, eight years ago, they ramped it up trying to, uh, you know, uh, shut this down. They ramped up uh, Rogan and the rest of these people to promote psychedelics as heavily as they could. The Esalen Institute, MAPS, Multidisciplinary Association for Psychedelic Studies, et cetera. All of that stuff are, uh, they're all front organizations working for the CIA, in my opinion, as far as Well, my that's research, on record, but I want to be clear. We're agenda. not judging anyone that's had an abortion. We're not judging anyone who's done the human sacrifice like I have. We're not judging anyone that's taken these. We're not saying overall that's bad. I'm not. I'm saying under these people's tutelage and these cults, the last place you want to take a hallucinogen, I say you shouldn't take it, is with some damn cult that says Do they've not. got... Wait, what? Do not take them. Do not take them. Do not take them. Yes, I agree with that. Please do not take those kind of drugs, especially under those under those kind of circumstances. Look, I want to be completely transparent. I did edit this severely just for the constraints of time, but I didn't alter the message at all. I think it's very, very interesting and instructive and insightful, and I hope to goodness that you are um, paying attention and will contemplate this and use it. Use this information wisely, okay? Please protect yourself and your loved ones as we go forward into this very turbulent time. We're up against another break. You are listening to the Unicus Radio Hour, and I am your Jedi host, Robert Stanley, podcasting from Hong Kong, the greatest alternative talk radio station on the planet, KGRA. We'll be right back. Thank you. Wouldn't you love to have a really sharp memory? More than ever before, people of all ages are struggling with memory problems and brain fog. Whether your poor memory is age-related or due to the effects of chronic stress, you can now improve your memory while reducing stress with the dietary supplement Calm and Clever. That's right, you get two products rolled into one. Some ingredients in Calm and Clever enhance memory and help retain newly learned information more effectively, while other ingredients in Calm and Clever reduce stress by maintaining health Healthy levels of the stress hormone cortisol. Calm and Clever was created by scientist Kurt Hendricks, a principal investigator in two NIH-funded studies on Alzheimer's disease. To sharpen your mind and feel calm and centered, try Calm and Clever for two months. You'll love the way you feel and think. To order Calm and Clever, call 1-800-728-9948 or visit CalmAndClever.com. 1-800-728-9948 or CalmAndClever.com. I'm a planner. Some of my friends say I'm a survivalist. I guess they're right, because when disaster hits, I have a survival plan, and it starts with my survivalist camp, my fully functional, off-the-grid, bug-out house. And when the you-know-what hits the fan, I'm out of here. So what the heck is a survivalist camp? At first glance, it looks like a very nice RV. But it's really engineered to provide my family with five basic needs for survival. Air, water, shelter, heat, and food. Survivalist Camps builds a camp to withstand all that nature and man can throw at it. It's fully mobile. My family and I can flee disaster fully self-sufficient in just moments. And its construction will last a lifetime. Look, if you're a planner, you need to check out survivalistcamps.com. They're like you and me. They believe a good plan is the best way to meet a disaster. Survivalistcamps.com. Be ready to be impressed. That's survivalistcamps.com. Get prepared at survivalistcamps.com. I'm a grandpa young enough to hike Big Sur with my son, and that's where I had a heart attack with no way to call for help. I felt sorry for my son. He looked as desperate as I felt as he took off for help. Luckily, he ran into Anna, a fellow hiker. She had a satellite phone, called for help, and saved my life. Today, I'm healthy and never out of touch because the satellite phone store makes it affordable to be connected anytime, anywhere. The satellite phone store gave me an MRSAT ISAT 2 satellite phone free. And the monthly plan is less than I spend on coffee every month. You can have one, too, while supplies last. Call the satellite phone store, 877-705-8839. Remember, the satellite phone store, 877-705-8839. The satellite phone store, dot com. Your contact for current news and trending topics, KGRARadio.com. Welcome back to the Unicus Radio Hour. I'm your Jedi host, Robert Stanley, podcasting from Hong Kong on the greatest alternative talk radio station on the planet, KGRA. You already knew that. 
Thank you so much for tuning into this particular show. I'm absolutely mind boggled by all this information. And uh, gosh, I'm not sure where this is leading, but it sure is interesting. Hopefully it's helpful. I was in the market just last night. As I say, clues are popping up everywhere in front of me. Again, it's probably because I'm just noticing it or I'm sort of tuned into that frequency. But this particular book sort of stuck out on the shelf at the market, right? It's called Sapiens, the the fingerprint of a human being. This is a brief history of humankind. And on the back cover, it says, Fire gave us power. Farming made us hungry for more. Money gave us purpose. Science made us deadly. It's a thrilling account of our extraordinary history. From insignificant apes to the rulers of the world. Well, that sounds like a bunch of BS. Um, And I only mention it because this is what passes for information. And it is clearly non- not just nonsense, it's, it's a distraction, it's a lie. The lies are still being told. And I know, as I said before, when you're presented with truth or what potentially could be accurate information, it sounds out of context because so many lies are being told. Um, anyway, just thought I'd bring that up. I thought it was really odd. Well, not really, uh, because, well... Here we go. Mainstream. (laughs) Mainstream. From the UK. The rise of Satanism in America. How members of the Satanic Temple focus on activism, religious pluralism, and social diversity. But not devil worship, as leaders are plagued by death threats and infighting. (laughs) Yeah, it says here that these Satanic groups first cropped up seemingly out of nowhere about six years ago wearing black capes with curved devil horns affixed to their head, holding posters and black American flags as they shouted, Hail Satan's. Hail Satan on the steps of government institutions across the United States. The annex and declarations seemed like a hoax to many, onlookers and journalists and politicians alike, until it became apparent that members of this newly formed Satanic Temple were here to stay. Well, yeah, because (laughs) where are they going to go? Moon, Mars, no, I don't think so. So I, this is why I'm really sick. I'm thinking now, taking a second look at this whole secret space program. I think it's a ruse. The uh, Space Force, so-called. Again, I think it's another ruse. I think it's a diversion and a distraction or they are, well, anyway, it, <laughs> it's one lie stacked on top of another. It says here, these satanic groups are growing exponentially. Since this particular group, uh, the Satanic Temple, was founded in 2012, the organization has increased from a handful of members to tens of thousands. Wow, how did that happen? There's chapters all over the U.S. and the globe, from Stockholm to London, Los Angeles to Texas. Did you know that? I mean, well, I mean, it's in the news, so how could you not know it? Or did you just look at that and say, well, that it's meaningless. It's just, a, it's an oddity. It's a phase that we're going through. It's not a phase. Excuse me. <laughs> did, I, did I probably scare somebody's dog and cat right out of the room? Um, this is reality, folks. This is what's happening. They're making a mad dash for the exits. And you, you want to know what I really think is happening? Probably not. But I'm going to tell you anyway. I believe that this, this whole call push of uh, secular humanism and the singularity... They're telling us now that we can supposedly download our souls into a chip. So I'm going to refer back to this book that I have on my uh, website, The Way Home. What if we really are the fallen angels? And what if we are really scheduled for execution if we don't become rehabilitated in a particular time frame that's allotted here? Well... The way that the dark side is thinking that they can somehow get around all of that is exactly what I just said, the singularity. Somehow they believe, I'm not sure why, and I hope this isn't the case because it's going to be really bad if that that really comes to fruition. 
they may have figured out a way, or at least they believe they've figured out a way, that they can stay the execution of their souls by downloading them into these particular machines or devices that are interdimensional. Uh, so is it a jailbreak, or is it it's some kind of shield? Whatever it is, it's not good. It's nefarious. It is extremely dangerous, to say the least. But these individuals, these fallen angels that we are a part of, allegedly, some of them, as I told you before, when in, in a prison system, you're going to have individuals that have to be in, you know, they're, they have to have maximum security because they're extremely dangerous. And they typically organize. Within the prison system, there are organized criminals inside that have a lot of power and control over others. And sometimes even guards, they, they bribe them or they blackmail them or whatever. So could this be happening? Is that a possibility? Of course it is. <laughs> we can't disprove that for sure. In fact, I haven't, nobody's really come up with a good argument yet. And I've been sharing this before I actually did this show and put that book up the way home before I put it up on the website. I shared it with other people and the reactions were pretty muted, I thought. Um, but that's, and that's fine. I mean, I didn't know what to expect. And for myself, I'm, I'm really still digesting it. I, I, I just think that there is some validity to it. It actually makes sense to me. I mean, it's not pleasant. As I said, it's very sobering. This is very serious. I mean, again, if, if all of that is what's going on here, it's, it makes sense that we're not being told about it because that would, uh, that would upset the agenda of the dark side to retain control over our souls. You know, they tricked us. And, and by the way, that doesn't excuse our behavior just because we fell for the lie. We agreed to it on some level. We're still responsible for our actions and we have to be held accountable. So, uh, f but ultimately, you know, who's going to, who is going to resolve the issue for us individually? And it has to be us. We have to make a choice. That's what I've been saying repeatedly, and I guess I'm going to have to keep saying it, we all need to make a choice. Do we want to serve the dark side, Conti continue to serve the dark side? Whether we're fully aware of it or not, is that what we want to do? Or do we want to <laughs> embrace the light side of the force and all that in it entails? I'm going to continue with this article. The Satanic Temple and all its offshoots, it seems, is becoming more and more firmly established across the United States. And again, it, as I said, across the world. It's largely composed of individuals who don't even worship Satan in the first place, but they're centered on a different interpretation of biblical teachings. <laughs> really? Uh, I, yeah. Well, Okay. That means that they're just, they're perverting the teachings. And again, I'm not even sure it's the teachings. I really don't know. Um, when you read, uh, this doesn't look like it has anything to do with the biblical teachings at all. They're carrying around a neon cross. These guys look they're, like they're bikers. This is this goth-looking chick. Uh, it says, you know, like, she's got Hail Satan tattooed on her chest, but she's wearing a crown of thorns that really aren't thorns. I don't know. These people all look completely bonkers. And they're standing and having a celebration in some dark nightclub uh, with a statue of Baphomet. I mean, come, and it looks like there's even children in there. Is it? Yeah. Oh, no, no. That's, I. oh, sorry. Got to look more closely. The, it's not just a statue of Baphomet with a pentagram in the background. It is, it, the, there are children at the feet of Baphomet in this particular statue. Um... <laughs> They're in, okay, so they're, okay. 
This particular article is saying that unlike, you know, the hardcore Christians, these Satanists were, were acting like adults in the room. Not at all what we were expecting. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, of course, they're very sophisticated, aren't they? Well-educated. And they're receiving death threats. Well, okay. So they say, I don't know. You really think Christians are out to kill them? Or is it the other way around? Or, I this come on. Yeah. Yeah, and then they're they're citing Anton LaVey. Yeah, oh good. who was huge in Hollywood. No doubt there was more mind control involved in all of that. And um well, anyway, yeah, that's a creepy statue. Oh, there's a better picture of it. Good Lord, and here's some lesbians kissing over somebody's grave. French kissing each other over someone's tombstone, because that's always a good thing to do. Uh-huh. <laughs> oh, God. Anyway, I, I, I'm sorry. I guess I shouldn't even bring this up, but it's it's relevant, I think, I thought. That's why it was so... Uh, God, in the same vein, all right, I, there's some other things. People are still coming up for the first time on my r initial interview on Leak Project with Rex Bear and, uh, you know, about how I allegedly met Enki or was confronted by him up on a mountain in Malibu, etc., Someone writes to me, says, I just finished listening to your interview with Rex on YouTube regarding the Archons, Anki, etc. You articulated many things that I agree with and have been thinking about for the past several years as I've been studying our origins and the complexities and dichotomies of the Bible. I have a 15-year-old daughter that I feel obligated to lead down a spiritual path, but it's a very difficult road to navigate when you start looking into the things that you've discussed in your interview. As I said, things that I very much agree with from simple observations and research. Do you have any recommendations for the spiritual side of life and what we'd like to think we normally get from gatherings of like-minded people trying to do better in life? Very much appreciated. Okay, well, I, <clears throat> uh, yeah, again, I mean, <laughs> this is why I'm doing the show. That's why I have the website. It's evolving. I, I, I don't even remember everything I said to Rex in that initial interview. I'm sure that some of it was incorrect um, because... Look, I'm under the influence as well. I am a targeted individual as well. I, I live in a world full of lies. and um, But I'm not going to give up. I'm certainly not going to just give in. And I would have to say, honestly, the tagline of this show, the Unicus Radio Hour, is exposing the dark side. You could even say we're opposing the dark side, but in a very unusual way. It's Again, it's not swinging around red lightsabers or whatever. It's, it's, it, we're on the hero's journey here to rehabilitate ourselves on a soul level so that we can reclaim our divinity and ultimately return back into the, the family, the rest of the family, okay? And uh, that's, that really is what this is about. Here's somebody else, really interesting, I thought. Hello, Mr. Stanley. My name is so-and-so. I live in Canada. I'm currently listening to your interview on Leak Project with Rex about how you met Enki, who I know as the magician. I met him too in a dream that I'm well aware now was not really even a dream. I was taken away from my current reality onto a craft or deep into the earth or the moon. Who knows? I just know I wasn't here anymore. I'm in a tall man, at least seven feet tall, very white skin, blue eyes. The rest is very personal. I'd like to share much more about this. I've written about it uh, not long after it happened. Uh, I couldn't function properly mentally for a period of time until I wrote about it. And once I did, my life returned to its new state of normal. I haven't shown many people this, my writings. Only two people, in fact. Something inside me tells me not to talk about this. But... Somehow, I feel you're okay to talk to, even though you're a stranger. But I must also say, I've never been the same since that experience. When I awoke from the quote-unquote dream, I was shaking, sick, covered in sweat, and I was just out of whack. It was about 3 a.m. when I awoke. Took a shower, went back to bed. When I woke in the morning, I was different. Changed. All in a good way, of course. It was beneficial. That was about five years ago or so now. 
but is one but it has been one hell of a journey ever since yeah so notice the word there terminology it's a hell of a journey yes apparently so everything i thought i knew has been turned upside down everything i believe once before has changed i'm still myself but i'm somehow more I have memories that are not mine. I know things that I cannot really explain. I'm connected to something beyond what we see. I really have no words to describe it. I do apologize for being so vague, but that's it in a nutshell. I'd love to talk more about this sometime with someone else who understands. I hope this finds you well. I wish you well. Thank you for reading this. All the best. Oh, man. I get a lot of stuff like that, believe it or not. Um... <laughs> Okay, I, I guess I, I really shouldn't read all this email. I, I just don't want to, actually can't read it anymore. I, uh, very interesting, though. I do appreciate it. And, uh, yeah, I don't know what happened to this individual in Canada, but I'm sure it was transformational, and I hope it was beneficial. And I do think that we are all being given guidance and assistance along this path, that the benevolent ones who are not fallen really are our family, and they do care about us, and they want us to return home. However, it's conditional, meaning that we have to be well. I, as I said before over the years, I do think that this is some sort of illness, a spiritual sickness, a dis-ease, or an infection, actually. That's what I was thinking the word. Uh, and that uh, it's something we can recover from, and that's one of the reasons that we were not exterminated or terminated or ex executed, whatever you want to call it, deleted from the system. We weren't taken out for our transgressions, our crimes, our rebellion. It's not inherent to our nature as divine beings, okay? Something went haywire. It wasn't just an abuse of free will. Something really went wrong. I don't know if it was in completely, you know, Lucifer, Enki's fault, but whatever it was, it, it is real. However it started is kind of irrelevant. The fact is, it's here. We are living it. And that's why I, I'm doing this show. I'm, I'm hopefully helping people to put things into the proper context and to comprehend it better and realize that this is something that we all need to deal with individually and that ultimately, collectively, we're all going to be better for it. So, you know, I hope you will take time to read this, at least some of this book that I've put up in the website, The Way Home. You know, the author says, if we'd simply obeyed God, there would have been no confusion or conflict in the minds, in our minds. Specifically, he's talking about Adam and Eve and the rest that followed. We would have learned only good from God, the tree or source of the knowledge of good and truth. It would have been quick and easy and you know, the bodies that have been provided for us would have lived forever, relatively speaking. Not that this was going to be our permanent home. This was a classroom setting inside a prison. We were quarantined, essentially, and um, so that we could be rehabilitated or brought back to a state of health. If all had gone to plan, they would have learned. Our ancestors, our, the rest of our family, the Adam, Eve, whatever, lineage would have learned from God's teachings. They would have become more like him until once they became enough like him, they would have been pardoned and released from this planet prison, allowed to go home, back to their real homes and families out in the universe, and then really live forever. Not not in, I don't think in the physical, not in an animal, human form. Uh, would have been something different. Angelic, I guess we call it. Doesn't that make sense? I hope it does. Ay, 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 ay. Um, how do I get to this? Get, get to the point here. It says, It's impossible for man to do what he should until he learns to worship the pure love of God instead of just sex or power, which is, you know, weapons of the dark side, to know the difference between the two. Um, yeah, I okay. Uh, again, I know some people are going to find this difficult. I do find it difficult to accept or even consider some of these things that are said in here. It says human society can never work as currently situated. 
because it is based on human selfishness. A uh, kingdom or house divided can never stand. Yeah, well, that's obvious. And we see that all the time. I told you, the, the blame game right now, despicables versus deplorables, that's all part of the work of the dark side. Yeah. It says here, yeah, the world became so evil because people listened to Satan instead of to God that the reform school stopped working. No one was learning to be good enough to go home. In fact, just like today, people were learning to be more and more evil. So God decided to make a fresh start. I don't know if we're going to get another fresh start. I mean, how many second chances can you possibly give some group like this that we are part of? Again, not everybody is as corrupt or ill, spiritually, you know, ill, suffering, obviously. It's a matter of degree. I, I'm surprised that some people are still here because they seem so saintly. I, I just, I don't know why they're still here at all. Those, they're souls, but they are. So anyway, he goes on to talk about the, the flood and why that was actually a benevolent act as opposed to, again, as opposed to just simply executing all of the souls that were imprisoned here or quarantined. Um, it was a redo, a reset. However, Noah's descendants fell once again into the same old trap, which, you know, is why they were kicked out of heaven in the first place because they were listening to and being deceived by the devil's lies, and because of it, they gradually became more and more evil again after the flood. So, and he gives an explanation here about that whole thing. You know, it, it, it seems to be devolving. This isn't working out very well as far as the collective. Naturally, there are individuals that are getting with the program, and they are being rehabilitated, and you don't hear much about them because... Because, uh, well, they've already left, as far as I can tell. Anyway, um, I'm still looking at this book. I, I don't think we're going to get to all of it. I mean, there's just no way, because we're almost out of time here. You can read it for yourself, if you're interested or not. It's pretty strange. I mean, I like I said, I, I don't know. He, he sort of jumps all over the place with things that I just... I have a hard time only because, uh, you know, it conflicts with other people's narrative of of what supposedly happened, how we got, how we really got here, who God is, you know? I mean, oh, man. I think ultimately we all have to make up our own mind what feels correct, you know? I mean, it's not... It's not as though we're all living separate realities. We obviously are in the same thing. We're all in the same boat, as it were. But um, I find it curious. That, you know, it's very similar to what this guy who wrote this book, The Way Home, he, he's very much like uh, the books of uh, John Pinella, the Divine Secret Garden books. They both say that uh, religion is the work of the dark side, and yet they're speaking about religious events or I don't know. Maybe they're just. Maybe we should take a secular view. That's how I look at it. Just because you talk about Jesus or Muhammad or, you know, the flood or whatever, it doesn't have to immediately be taken in the context of religion. It's been forced into that paradigm or that little box. But I don't see it that way. I take a secular view of it. You know, I believe in God. I just don't believe in religion or the religious interpretations of God and our history. I think there's a huge amount of disinformation by the dark side. Hmm. And allegedly, again, according to this author, and then I'll wrap this up, he says that after trying over and over again to teach people to, stray, to stay away from religions and to talk only to him, meaning God, for guidance, having already sent enlightenment to the many prophets, God decided that the only solution was to send Prince Michael and put him in a human animal form, just like the rest of us, to show him, the, to show the way that we need to be enabled to go home. 
Yeah, so maybe that's true. I I don't know. He's also claiming the Star of Bethlehem was a spaceship. A lot of people have said that. He claims that Jesus said, I am the way that each of you, every one of you, has to be before you can come home. What well, That may be. That may very... <laughs> That may very well be. I, I think it remains to be seen for sure. Um, and I, I don't know how this all fits in with the return of Christ or Jesus or Michael or whatever you want to call him. Uh, if that's really in the cards, uh, I don't think it's going to be a picnic. It's it's going to be a probably a very traumatic time for a lot of us, if not everyone. And, and I don't mean that in religious terms, okay? Please, let's be clear about that. We've come to the end of another episode of the Nucus Radio. Hour. I really do appreciate your time and effort to uh, listen to this show and try and make sense of it with myself. Obviously, I'm still I'm still working on it, as you can tell. So, <laughs> until next time, may the Force be with you. Mm-hmm.